everybody and welcome to my channel today. Today's video is going to be very brief and we're just going to be covering 10 of the most common food prep terms and processes involved in getting ready to cook your meal. Now this list isn't exhaustive. Like I said, it's only the top 10 and there are definitely other ways in which you can prepare for your cooking experience. However, all of this information is very important and will be very helpful when it comes to successfully executing your recipe in the kitchen. So let's get started. Preparation is very important for a successful cooking experience in the kitchen. Some ingredients require prep very basically, such as cutting to the appropriate size for the dish. Other ingredients may require an additional step to prepare it for the cooking process. We'll get to those in just a second. We're going to start off with the most important part of cooking in the kitchen, and that is sanitation. So sanitation is the first and most important part of prepping in your kitchen. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at the safety and sanitation video released previously, take a look at that, as well as its companion video all about bacteria in the kitchen. So to start off, sanitation in the kitchen. The most important thing is to clean all of the surfaces before you get started, including clearing up any clutter that you might have in the corners where food bits and bacteria may collect. This both prevents spoiled food from showing up in your kitchen, but also prevents pests from coming into your kitchen and eating that food themselves. Make sure that you wash any of the ingredients that may require washing. That includes the exterior of fruits and vegetables, but this does not mean meat. Do not wash meat. Washing meat is not necessary, but it also puts your kitchen at risk for cross-contamination. If you're washing the exterior of meat into your sink and you're getting a backsplash all over in the sink and then you go to wash your fruits and vegetables, you'll contaminate them and that's just one very simple reason why you shouldn't be washing your meat as part of your uh, kitchen preparation. Additionally, you should always keep raw meat and their juices away from raw and cooked fruits and vegetables to further eliminate contamination. The second step is initial preparation in the kitchen. This means such things as if you're using a recipe, make sure that you look over the recipe a couple times so that you know what ingredients you're going to need as well as the cooking times and the temperatures that are going to be required and any other information related to special instructions that you may not be prepared for. And those special instructions include uh, things like par cooking, par boiling, breading, battering, blanching, which are terms we're gonna get to just in a little, just in a few minutes. Initial prep, if using a recipe, means looking it over to make note of the ingredients, the cooking times and the temperatures, and any information related to special instructions like par cooking or par boiling ingredients, any specific cooking information such as preheating or temperature changes mid preparation or bringing meat to the to room temperature. There are a number of basic steps required and it's important that you take a look at your recipes. Making sure to read through the recipe and doing all the initial prep steps to cooking will help it not be as overwhelming in the process, as well as eliminates any surprises mid cooking, which can cause you stress and which can discourage you from cooking in the future. If you want to know more about how to read a recipe and the things to look out for, please take a look at um, my, the video I did on how to read a recipe that you find online. I am not sure if the link is in the description yet. It might be coming out with this video. Keep an eye out for it. It's got some good information. Step three is gather all your supplies. This is everything from the pots and the pans that you're gonna cook in, to the bowls that you need, to possible whisks or spatulas. Make sure that you put it all out on the counter where you can see it so that you don't have to go and look for it while you're cooking. 
So for gathering supplies, you just gather together any equipment you might need, including materials such as parchment paper, aluminum foil, pot holders, containers for food scraps, a damp towel. All of these items are important parts of preparing to cook. The fourth one is mise en place. And mise en place is a French term that generally means all in one place. And this is a term used uh, when it comes to your food ingredients. So what you want to do is you want to gather together all your food ingredients and prepare them to the first step. So if your recipe calls for chopped onions, chop those onions and put them in a bowl and then move on to the next item. This does two things. This makes sure that you're not going to miss any ingredients and it is essential to quickly executing the dish and it just makes it so much easier. It's also 100% standard in every restaurant kitchen in the world. A good kitchen starts with a good mise en place. So next we're moving on to the fifth thing and this is where we're starting with preparation techniques. These are things that you may have to do to an ingredient before you add that ingredient to the larger dish. Now I'm only going to be talking about those today. In the future I have a bunch of demonstration videos coming out in which I will be demonstrating and discussing not only these terms from today but the terms from the uh, basics of cooking videos, the wet, uh, the moist methods of cooking and the dry methods of cooking and um, all the terminology from that. So for today we're just talking about five of the main prep food prep procedures that you may have to do. So the first of the five is toasting. And toasting doesn't just mean like for bread. I'm talking toasting as in um, croutons, toasting as in different kinds of nuts like toasted walnuts or toasted pecans. So for toasting, you wanna gather the items to be toasted in addition to a spatula and other spreading tools that may be required to achieve the toasting and any spread that may be required to be applied while the item is still warm. Generally, if you're not toasting in a toaster, you'll be toasting on a rack that's been fitted inside of a sheet pan in an oven at high heat. Number six, or the second preparation technique, battering. And battering is one of two applications used in items that are going to be deep fried. Generally, battering is done right before you put the item into the hot oil. And battering is when an ingredient undergoes a quick dip into a prepared batter and is dropped directly into hot oil. The batter must be placed near the deep fryer and a plate or other flat item covered in a paper towel in order to drain the item should also be included. Also make sure you have a slotted spoon on hand. So generally you can hold a battered item while you prepare any other ingredients that may be required for that dish. As with any holding any item, please refer back to safety and sanitation for making sure that you keep your food items held at an appropriate temperature that does not encourage bacteria growth. The third type of preparation and the seventh for this whole list is breading, which is a technique that you can use for deep frying, but you can also use for shallow frying, for pan frying, and for baking. So a breading station consists of five elements, and these five elements are important for pulling off a great breading. In the breading station, the first, the first one is a dish for your raw ingredient. The second is a dish for your flour, for dredging your item. The third is your liquid dish, and that's going to be probably eggs or milk or a combination of the two. The fourth one is the coating. So that's gonna be whatever you decided to coat it with, whether it be panko crumbs or chopped nuts, or in my case, crushed pork rinds. I really love breading things with crushed pork, pork rinds but that's what you're gonna put in your fourth dish. And then your fifth dish is going to be the dish that's going to have uh, some paper towel on it where you will drain the food item. These five positions in your breading station will be very important to both execute your breading effectively as well as 
probably making much less of a mess because breading does get to be a messy procedure. Next we're moving on to an ice bath. And an ice bath is used for a couple different reasons. But to start with, you want to have a large bowl, a good quantity of ice and access to water. You don't want to do it too far in advance because then the ice will start to melt and it will not be quite as effective. It's important not to fill up the ice bath with too much ice and water because you don't want the vessel to overflow when you put the food into the ice bath. You want to ensure that you have enough space for the ice water to flow around the vessel and cool it from the sides as well as the bottom. As the ice melts, the level of ice water may drop and you should be prepared to add more ice and more cold water to keep it at the desired level. In addition, you'll want something that you can pull the items out of the water with. You want to set up the ice bath so that as soon as you need to pull the item out of the simmering water, it can go directly in the cold water where it will shock the item and prevent it from further cooking, which is the purpose of an ice bath. And finally, 10. Well, this doesn't look like the rest of the video. Once I started editing, I realized I left out a term and that term is blanching. And blanching means to partially cook items very briefly in boiling water or fat. Blanching is usually a preparation technique for use with other cooking methods. Blanching is handy for things like loosening peels of vegetables, fruits, or nuts, or to prepare an ingredient for freezing, or it is often used for french fries. One of the ways you use blanching is when you're making a tomato concasse, which is when you take a tomato and you drop it into boiling water briefly and you pull it out and then you shock it in cold water. That causes the peel of the tomato to loosen. And this is a step really important in making any sort of tomato sauces from fresh tomatoes. The 10th preparation technique for cooking that we're talking about today is thawing. And thawing is the process by where you take your frozen food item out of the freezer and you bring it to a temperature appropriate for cooking. You always want to thaw your meat before you cook it. You never want to cook meat that is frozen on the inside. You never want to thaw your items on the counter for more than about an hour and a half. And again, see the safety and sanitation videos on just why that is. In addition, you want to make sure when you're thawing something out that you're thawing it well in advance so that you can make sure that it is the internal temperature that it should be to successfully cook the item. Also, you want to make sure that you are thawing your food item on a plate because especially with meat, once it thaws, it's the blood starts to come out and you don't want to have a bloody fridge. You will never be able to thaw a meat item outside of possibly fish on the counter in the amount of time that is safe. So to bring it back around, the final step we talked about was thawing. And one of the important parts of knowing what you need to thaw is in that initial prep step that we talked about at the beginning, number two, read through your recipe and see what you need. Some things that you might find in initial prep in addition to things that need to be thawed or things that need to be come to room temperature, such as butters or eggs. Well, that's it for today. I hope you found some of this information useful. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel for future content. If you like any of my videos, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Interaction is super helpful for growing a YouTube channel. Thank you for stopping by, and as always, have a wonderful day. Baby, oh, does Baxter want to talk to the TV? Does Baxter want to talk to the TV? Oh, Biggie Boo. Want to tell everybody how much you love your mama? Hmm?